everybody. And I'm just going to wait for some people to come on and say hello. Hello, Lauren Thomas. Hello, Sarah Daisy Boo. Hey, ho. Hi, Keith Duffy. There he is. How do I get you on now? <laughs> ah, come back. How do I get one? How do I get Keith on here now? Oh, no. How do I do that? Danny, yeah. come here, quick. Do you know how to do this? Okay, hang on. Let me see. Oh, I got it. Okay, I think I have it. I think I've got it. Where is Keith Durfer? Okay, I've got to find this. Oh no, I can't find you. Keith, where are you? Where are you, Keith Duffy? You keep saying hello, but I can't get you on. Thank you for the happy birthday wishes from people on the other side of the world. Yes, it's my 40th birthday in Australia and I think most of most of Southeast Asia now at the moment. Hey, Tama, what's going on? Yes, champ, I'm good. <laughs> Right, I'm trying to get Keith on as well, though, so... Oh, does anyone know how to do this? Danny, can you come and help? <laughs> I'm screwed, I don't know what to do. Oh, hang on, there's Keith, right? So there he is, look. How do I get him on the video? This is Danny, everyone. <laughs> um, right, so now he has to... You, he has to request he, me, doesn't request he? Request you, but I think it's on that one. No, it's not. Oh, that's so they're, they're, that's questions. That's okay. Cool. See, we're not used to this. Do -do 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 -do. Uh, Let me see what. Um, how did it happen? Let's see. I don't know. Let's go. No, no, no. You got. If you got. No, no. You guys, not that one. I saw that a second ago. You go like this, right? Watch. You press those faces. They're there. Hang on, not that. Oh, go away. <laughs> See, there he is. Hopefully we have Keith now. Thanks, Danny. I didn't help. Yay! <laughs> Hi, Keith Ophi. Hello, Brian McFadden. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy, isn't it? This is great, yeah. So what do we do? <laughs> we just talk to each other. Look at all the... Can you see all the people talking on the bottom of the screen? Oh, yeah, they're starting to come up now, yeah. Yeah, so if you, here's Danny. Danny's doing the cleaning, as usual, look. <laughs> I love it. I'm just on Instagram Live, and Danny's just washing up around me. She's like Monica from Friends. <laughs> I'm out in the garden. Look how sunny it is. It's beautiful. Gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. I'm jealous. Beautiful. Beautiful have you been day, shipping golf balls out there? I have. I've been digging up the garden with my golf clubs. <laughs> Hacking away. So how's it feel now? You've only got a few hours left in your 30s. Well, it's kind of weird because I'm, technically I'm 40 in Australia, where I spend a lot of my life. <laughs> so I've got all, all my friends in Australia and people I know in Australia have been all messaging me going, happy 40. So it's kind of weird. So in Australia, I'm still in my, thir or I'm in my 40s and here I'm still in my 30s. <laughs> you still look in your 30s. I know, it's great. Good, good doctors, you know. Yeah, that's it. Are we supposed to be answering so, questions? Yeah, everybody's, everybody, it's kind of, I've kind of got to figure out how to do this. Okay. Um, Danny, have you got the questions as well? Danny's got some questions for us that she wrote down from people. Okay, hang on, let's see, hang on, there's a lot of people. People coming in here. 
Uh, oh, thank you, Fiona. Hi, oh, you're back again. Yeah, Here we go. Okay. Hi, Hazel and John. Hi, Darren. Hi, Lauren. Hi, Fiona. Lots of people I know, huh? Are you giving up? I can't believe Danny's just come in and put, brought a coaster from my from my dad's coat. And then he doesn't put it on the coaster. <laughs> is there only Diet Coke in that glass? There is. No, there's ice in it as well. <laughs> a bit in there. <laughs> okay, here we go. You can you call out the questions. Okay, yeah, look, look at my buddy here. Who said Need a haircut? Get look at mine. <laughs> look at that. Oh, by the way, we're on point. We're on pointless on BBC One at the moment. Oh, really? Um, and your hair is really short in it. And, yeah, and yeah. I just had my hair transplant, so I'm wearing the Peaky Blinders hat. Okay. Um, and we look very different. We're we not on very it different. Long. We're not on it for long, Brian. Don't worry. <laughs> no, we were. We got to the. We got to the very end. Remember, we oh, lost. Really? I thought we, we got. Oh no, me and Mikey Graham got kicked off after the first round when we did it together. No, me and you went all the way to the end, and then they had some. The last question we were up against the fella from the Sex Pistols and that Slim Jim fella. Oh yeah. And the last question was about the French Revolution or something, and the two of us just looked at each other. <laughs> we thought the French we thought the French Revolution they started selling the baguettes and spar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love I love crispy chicken of mine. <laughs> right, what have we got? Do we have any questions? Okay. Okay, here we go. So this one here. Number one on the other side. Oh this side. Okay, so this is from Instagram. Okay, so they had the names of the people. Yeah. So that's from um Okay, so Nicola, Nicola from, Lon from London. Nicola from London. Who can't wait for the album, by the way, which is good. Um, if you could invite five famous people to dinner, living or dead, who would you have? Dusty, you go first. Any five people on the planet, dead or alive? Well, obviously you, because it's your birthday. Thank you. <laughs> what a wait! What a waste that was. I'd be there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Elvis Presley. Okay. Why Elvis? Uh, huh? Why Elvis? Well, he was the king of. Rock and roll, wasn't he? I mean, I was only well, watching what, a show about him yesterday, so that's probably why he's on my mind. He was. What would you amazing... ask him? Like, what would you? What would you ask him? Because I always think about people, like, Elvis would be on mine as well. What? Would, what kind of questions would you ask Elvis if you I'd had probably, that kind of time at a table? I'd, I'd probably be starstruck and I wouldn't be able to talk to him at all. I'd just keep staring at him. <laughs> just keep winking him. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Um, <laughs> Michael Jackson. Yep. Um, I don't know, man. Jeez. Marilyn Monroe. Oh well. Um, yeah, you, you gotta have well, some so, the table. so far, everyone you've invited is dead. So either you're very cheap and you just want to have have no food. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone uh, alive? No. Li living? Yeah, Larry Mullen from U2. Yeah, I thought he'd be there. You're gonna have some band, by the way. It'd be some sing song at the end of the night. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Who else? And what I'm about not... what about your fifth then? To be a chef, so they can cook the food. Yeah, but I don't like many chefs. <laughs> what about Gordon Ramsay? I, I kind of fancy myself as a chef, so I'll do all the cooking. That's true. Um, you, you know everyone's going to end up having these uh, ham and cheese, grilled cheese sandwiches covered in corned beef and butter. And... <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Um, I actually had a sandwich today. I got, I went down and got Brennan sliced bread. You know the Brennan sliced bread? Nice. U usually, I go oh, for, yes. usually I go for mashed loaf, but I just decided today to get some of that really fresh Brennan sliced bread. So I buttered two Beautiful. slices. Then I put down really thick, very extra mature cheddar cheese. Then I put down Slowly. Sauce. Then I put down some ham. Yum. Then I put down some mayonnaise. Then I put down some a packet of potato crisps, cheese and onion crisps. Then I put down the, the corned beef over tin and more brown sauce and mayonnaise. What did you call an ambulance after that for a heart sake? <laughs> <laughs> I rang the ambulance before I ate it, just in case. I yeah. <laughs> just to give them a heads up. Yeah. <laughs> So, so who's your fifth then? And uh, who would be my fifth? Let me see. Someone a bit of style and banter. Maybe, um, um, maybe Lady Gaga to kind of oh, mess yeah. up. With Lady Gaga, yeah. You've absolutely. got a nice, nice mix there. All music, which is which is interesting. All music people. Yeah. Um, yeah. My five, I would like. Um, 
I'm going to start with Ricky Gervais just because he would be so entertaining the whole night. He would just be hilarious and make me laugh the whole time. Um, I would have oh, Tiger Woods. <laughs> See, just to talk Big about Jim, all Big Jim is just on there saying he'll come to, he'll come to dinner as well. <laughs> no doubt. We haven't got no food. <laughs> um, who would I like? Uh, I'd like Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio. I think they'd be awesome. Great stories oh, yeah. as well. Yeah, but man, you're, you're putting a lot of competition for yourself around the table there, you know what I mean? Well, like Danielle's going to be the fifth, so it'll be okay. So she, she has to keep her eyes off. <laughs> yeah, you see, Danny's in the room, so I had to go with football and golf. I couldn't say women. <laughs> I'm not stupid. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in punching ring. I'm now, and you can get his real list. All right. Scrap that, we'll go again. <laughs> right now. now give me a real list. Okay. Okay, here's the next question. Debbie Jane from the UK. What are, are each other's most annoying habits? Um, well, you'll have, to, you'll, have to, you'll have to say what mine are and I'll say what yours are. Um, it's, it's not really have annoying habits. Huh? <laughs> Very well, we hard. Know you, we know what you don't have bad habits. You're, you're, you for me is going to be um, probably vaping in the, in the car and vaping in the dressing room. Yeah, but well, you don't do that, Brian. You don't do that. Well, I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know what like, my worst habit for you is. You don't really have any terrible habits. No, I don't think we, Oh, I don't no, I'll tell you what your worst habit is. Your what? worst habit is you tell the same story. Uh, like you te You'll tell me a story, and about 20 minutes later, you'll go, oh, come here, wait till I tell you. And you'll tell me the whole story from start to finish again. Everybody that knows you, go, everybody that knows you, would say the same thing <laughs> again and again. Just, you literally just told me that. <laughs> yeah. And when I've had a few drinks, I forget I've told the story. I get all excited all over again. <laughs> no, it's because it takes you so it takes you so long to tell a story. By the time it's finished, you go back to the start and forget where you were. Yeah, but I derail <laughs> myself and I go on little detours all the time. And I remember oh, that, that's another one as well. Yeah, yeah. The detour, the detour does be more exciting than the actual story that I was telling. So I start telling that one instead. Yeah, you'll be going to me. And did you know, like, the, the, uh, the Statue of Liberty was actually a present from the French to the Americans. And they'll be like an hour later. Keith, I only asked you what time it was. <laughs> Is there not a clock on the Statue of Liberty? No, 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 sorry. <laughs>
starstruck. Well, I've met some incredible people. Like, I met the Pope, Pope John Paul, before he died. Um, did you really? That, yeah, I did. We, we all did. We performed at the um, at the Pope's concert, and then you got to meet the Pope. We had a meet and greet with the Pope, and we brought our parents and everything. All our parents in the band all came over to, wow. the, to the Vatican. And that that was, would have been amazing. It, but it was a quite amazing, because it was, you know, whether you're religious or not, the Pope is still, you know, he's, he's one of the biggest figures on the planet. And when you, when you meet him, it's just... It's especially Pope John Paul because he was our Pope when we were growing up, and every house yeah, well, in Ireland has a has a photo of a Pope John Paul in the house, you know. Well, he visited Ireland. He visited Dublin in 1979. I know. I was in my I know. Well, yeah, I was in my mum's belly. My mum went to Phoenix right. Park, and I was in her belly. Right. Well, my, my, my brother was born in '79, and his name is John Paul after John Paul the Pope. People, if you're not Irish and you're watching this, you will have no idea. Like. You've seen concerts and, and big shows and stuff like that and, and, and big gatherings. But when Pope John Paul came to Ireland in 1979, it was there must have been what close to a million people in Phoenix Park over that day. Yeah, just, I mean, and the there's only four million people went. in Ireland, so <laughs> pretty much. Most it would have been a great time to be a house robber. Yeah, <laughs> there, was no, there was nobody at home. That was insane. Right, okay, let me see. What have we got? Claire Whitaker. Uh, how did you choose which songs for the album? That's Claire Whitaker on Facebook. Well, it was it was one of those things, Claire. Um, when we sat down to, to talk about making this this Boys Life album, which was going to be Keith and I's favorite songs from Westlife and Boys Zone, recorded with the Royal Philharmonic, you know, we had to first of all discuss which songs would 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 kind of work with an orchestra because some of the songs, you know, like for example, I'll give an example. We ended up recording World of Our Own. Um, with the orchestra and when it was over it just didn't work it didn't sound right um so that was the first plot the first plot was which of all the hits from both bands would work with the orchestra if you were to recreate them um and then also there was there was other other factors like Bo Keith and I just had to decide which songs we wanted to sing which songs did we enjoy singing like for me I was never going to do this album without doing Flying Without Wings and 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 for both of us we were never going to do this album without doing You Need To Me because it's it's one of our favorite songs from both bands um, so that, that's kind of there was there was lots of different things. There was a lot of talking and, and a lot of kind of playing songs and trying to visualise them with an orchestra. Um, but in the end, I think we got the, we got the right mix. Yeah. Oh, nice. Absolutely. Glasses on. Oh, yeah, the sun, is, on the, the sun is shining down in Dublin. Right, Karen Overton. If you could turn into a superhero or a cartoon character. For a day, who would it be? Um, I'd love to be the Invisible Man. <laughs> <laughs> for, the, for, the same reason that, for the same reason that everybody would like to be the Invisible. Why? I don't. I don't know your reasons. What's your reasons? <laughs> Use your imagination. <laughs> the amount of things you, know, could do, I'm, I'm you could do. I'm drawing you want. a blank. I don't know. I've drawn a blank. I haven't got a clue. <laughs> well, you, you wouldn't draw a blank if you were invisible. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, oh, for me, I would be... Oh, it's the wrong hand. <laughs> Batman. Batman. Yeah. Really? I like Batman because he's, he's, cool. he's, he's no, a cool he, character. He'd no, he no superpowers, though. He did. He was a billionaire. Oh, yeah. I suppose that's powerful enough, isn't it? That's superpower. He could buy anything he needed to buy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And probably because he's the most realistic of them all, because it's more about money, being able to buy all the kind of the back car and all his cool toys and stuff, rather than it being a kind of a, a superpower. So he's my favourite. Yeah. Right, well, that's, 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 either the Invisible Man or, or Wonder Woman. Yeah, Wonder Woman. <laughs> oh, I've got some more. Look at that. Danny's written all the questions down. She's gone through them all. She's got more from me. Oh, brilliant. Um, so from Instagram stories... Uh, Mrs. Burkio wants to know where should I visit in Ireland? Duster, I'll leave that to you. You're you're there now, so Well, you know, we're very blessed to have a beautiful island. Um and the island of Ireland is beautiful. All along the different various coastlines is, is phenomenal. You know, if you start on the east coast, you know, you, we've got some beautiful beaches in Dublin, but if you go down the wild Atlantic Way, which goes literally from the top of the country to the bottom on the west coast, the Atlantic coast. It's some of the best surfing in the world is up in Donegal. You're coming right the way down past Sligo, which again has got fantastic surfing into, into, into Galway, into the coast of Galway, down to Salt Hill. Then you got, got all the way down to, um, to Clare. 
you know, and then all the way down there to the likes of, um, you know, uh, Waterville. Wexford. Yeah, well, Wexford's yeah, on the west coast, but down the west coast is you've got like um, your your geography's terrible, Brian. But you go down, obviously, you come down to Kerry and Dingle and Waterville and all the coves, and then you got obviously you go with the Cork and you've got um, the old head of Kinsale. Uh, Beautiful, well, great golf, golf course. course there. Yeah, I mean, best golf course in Ireland for me. I think my favorite, if you're coming to Ireland, my favorite would definitely be the southwest coast. All the peninsulas like Dingle and like Waterville and like um, Ballybunion and all yeah. those places. It's just the most stunning. When you get weather like we have today here and you can see the sun is shining here. Yeah. You get weather like there. today down there. It's the most beautiful place in the world and you'd never need to go anywhere else. It's just gorgeous. You know what though? Up, up north as well, if you go up to like the Giants Causeway, um, you know, up that up there, just up past um, Belfast. I've been there as when I was a kid. I've been there a few times, but it's incredible. And you go to that, you know, that place where it's got the rope bridge across the two mountains. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, all gorgeous yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah, it's, but it's, that's it's where your that's where your family country. is from, Brian, isn't it? That's where your dad's well, from. All of that direction. That's yeah, that's Donegal, which is north west. Northwest, but yeah, yeah it's all it's all up north. Yeah, and again, it's gorgeous, and I love that part of Ireland, especially when we used to go up to my dad's. Up to where his family live in Creason and Donegal, and it was it's, you know, you know, being from a city and, and living in England, you never see this really, you know, anymore. Where you know you'd have almost an hour of the drive where there's literally just nothing, just like two lane road and no markings on the road and just mountains and nothingness for ages, and it's just gorgeous when you get out to that. Yeah, absolutely stunning. Like I said, if you get the weather, it's amazing. If, the, if it's shit weather, it could be the worst place in the world. That's it. I, I always say that, you know, on a, on a summer's evening in Ireland, it's the most beautiful place in the world. And I, I wouldn't, on, a, on a really beautiful summer's evening, the only place I ever want to be is in Ireland with the grass, playing a game of golf, just stunning. Um, yeah, okay, absolutely. Just, speaking of golf, Andrea Gillen wants to know who's the best golfer. Um, that's an easy one. It, there is no best golfer. Literally, every time we, we play, in, in, the good, in the good weather, we normally play Eddie every day, and literally a different person will win every day. I'll win, then he'll win, then I'll win, then he'll win. It's literally, it's, and we're pretty, our handicaps are pretty much the same as well. So it just depends on the day. Depends on who's got less of a hangover, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, golf is that type of game, man. You can go out some days and just play out of your skin and then you go out the next day and you, it's like you've never played golf before in your life. Um, yeah. Both true. of us struggle with that from time to time. It's very true. Okay, um, Duster, I know your answer already before I even ask this one, but Carol Whiteley won um, on Instagram wants to know, red wine or chocolate cake? Red wine all day long. Absolutely. And even if I had a chocolate cake, I want it made out of red wine. <laughs> exactly, um, yeah. Amanda May, 18. Uh, how long have you been friends for? Uh, we've been friends since, since Westlife started. Yeah. Westlife yeah. started 98. on tour with Boyzone. No, 98, that's right, yeah. We started our whole career. Actually, I met I met Keith. Um, I, I wouldn't even might have been ninety one or ninety. No, hang on. When did you start? Ninety five was it? Ninety three. Ninety three. So it was you were you were just after having your first big number one, and my sister Susan was playing Annie in the Olympia Theatre, and you and Stephen Gately. God and rest I think him. was was it Shane? Was it you, Stephen and Shane? I think possibly. Came in possibly. to see, see Susan. That was the first time I ever met you. I was only a kid, but I think I was only 14 or 15 at the time. Um, and then obviously, we, we, when we went on tour with Boyzone as, support, as, um, as our support act, Keith and I just got on straight away. And actually, the, the, the funny part was in, in that Boyzone tour and in that show, Keith had his, his own solo song in it where he sang, Where Have You Been? Where have you been? Good to be <laughs> and on, on um, the UK leg of the tour, Ronan Keaton used to do the, the vocal bit, the, the kind of answer to you. Do you remember? Yeah, so yeah. You'd have Rona doing the answer bit. But when we came to the European leg of the tour, they changed your set list around. And I think you had a quick change or something. So Rona didn't have time to come out and do the vocal. So you came to ask me to do it. Um, and then me and the, and the other boys then over the whole tour, we used to have tours every night of who would come out and do the, the guest vocal with you on the song. Yeah. And we used to, we used to run kind of in the brilliant. middle of the stage and jump up and best pu uh, chest pump each other. Chest Remember? pump, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, we did that um, recently. We did that recently one night on tour. I don't know if you remember. Just one night, yeah. randomly, we did it. And By you need to knock me out. I forgot to say that to you after the show that night. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then he killed you. 
I wasn't expecting it at all. No. <laughs> the uh, I meant to say, the, and the other thing as well is, it's, there was two we had two tour buses. There was one for Westlife and one for Boys on, and you ended up coming on our bus the whole time. That's right. Yeah. yeah. The, the the lads on our bus were all a bit boring, and you guys were kind of all energetic and looking for fun. So fun is where I'm at. Oh, fun arrived, all right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, In the shape these? of a fifteen stone lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, hang on. Who's that from? Okay, uh, John Hazel wants to know the best ever United match. Ah, oh, it's got to be the 99 Champions League final. Let's shout out. Ones that you've been to. That you've been yeah, to. but 99 was great. We did the treble that year, you know. Yeah. So it was like, it was just an amazing year to be a Man United supporter. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, have they made any decisions about the, the league this year? How's it going? Like, what way they're going to do it? No, not yet. They're still, I think they're still waiting. Um, there, there, was, there was talk of a comeback in May, but sure, who knows? I, I've heard will they just, will well, they just like, give Liverpool the cup? Do you think? No, no, they'll have to finish it off. They'll have to finish it off. It leader, it, I don't think they'll scrap it. I don't, like the fairest thing to do is just when everything comes back, you just carry on from where you were. And if next year's season has to start later, so be it. You know, you can't do that. You couldn't do that to Liverpool after after the season they've had, and they're like a hundred points ahead of everybody else with like eight games to go. You couldn't do that to them. Um, <laughs> I don't and that's know. a United fan. Right, hang on, I got more questions. Where are we? What's the... Emily Stance. If you hadn't joined Boys Own or Westlife, what do you think you'd be doing now? Wow. I mean, I, I, I don't really know. I mean, it's, it's a tough one to answer that one really, isn't it? You know? I think, I think it's hard to answer this because we were both so young when we joined the bands that, you know, we, we didn't go to college or university or we didn't have any kind of a... You know, we hadn't started any kind of an apprenticeship or any kind of a future plan at the time, did we? You know, I, no. I think if we, we could have answered that if we'd have started when we were 25 or 26, we might have a better idea. But both of us pretty much went straight from school into the bands. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, with the, with the current environment, the way you were all stuck at home in isolation, I could answer the question by standing up and going, my name's Keith Tuff, you know, I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> 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 Oh, hang on, we got uh, Mark, Mark McDonald just said, what would, we be, what would we have been if we hadn't have been in Westlife with boys from he said, the virgins. <laughs> 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 nice one, Mark. <laughs> right, we're going to, let's I'm gonna have a look at some questions that are on the screen now. Thank you for all those questions. Yeah, we've done all of them. Thanks for everyone who, who uh, sent in the questions, but we're going to answer some live ones now. Um, but at the moment, there we go. Keith, do you have any plans to do any more acting in the future? Yeah, well, I'd love to do more acting. I loved, I loved my time in Coronation Street. I was, I was there on and off for 10 years, but um, I left Coronation Street in 2012. So that was eight years ago. In the last eight years, I've done quite a lot of theatre work. I've done a lot of uh, one-off shows like The Job Lot, like Death in Paradise, like one-off kind of drama shows, and I really enjoyed doing that. Um, yeah. My favourite part of acting is, is the theatre, though. Small theatre, maybe 100 yeah. to 150 people in the audience. Up close what was that her. great show you did? A handful of stars, was it? Yeah, Billy Roach play A handful of stars was the last time I was in the I was in the Trafalgar Studios in London for three months doing that, and um, that was a that was a beautiful, amazing play. Orig originally written in the late seventies, early eighties, um, about a pool hall in Wexford, um, and I, I loved I loved that whole thing of eight shows a week, a matinee on a Saturday. I mean, it's hard work, but I love it. I have to say, uh, there's something about live theatre that scares the shit out of you. And I, for some reason, I love that. I love that scared them, you know? The scared them. <laughs> Is that the word I just made up myself? I love it. You're like, it's a George Bushism. A scare, uh, yeah, a I, love, I, love, I love the fear. <laughs> I love the fear. Just before you go out on stage, knowing you to do like a 10 or 15 page monologue and, and then start doubting the fact that you actually know it and you start panicking and then you step on stage and it rolls out. It's, it's, it's something yeah, special. No, I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be able for it. You see, you see the, the great thing about music is, you know, having that fear of forgetting lyrics, but songs are so easy because because they're verses and choruses and we know that if you just remember that bit then we're in the chorus you always remember the chorus but when I see like people doing scripts and I'm like when it literally every word is different there's nothing repeats there's no there's no repetition or there's no kind of in my head I'm like how would I remember so many pages where I look at a song I know that I've just got to learn that and that and then the rest is repeated I, that's, that's yeah, the but part not only with, with songs the music triggers something in your muscle memory in your brain and you kind of know what happens later it's like it's yeah. like years ago when we did a lot more um, dance routines to the songs. You know, you, yeah, you wouldn't yeah. remember the you wouldn't remember the dance routine just to do it. But when you hear the song, you kind of fall into what you're supposed to do. 
Yeah, 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 of course. People, yeah. people always ask, how do you remember all that? And you kind of remember it with the music that, that reminds you of it, and then you kind of step back into it, you know? Yeah, totally. <laughs> muscle memory. Not that we have much muscle anymore. <laughs> no, yeah. There's more memory than muscle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, my memory's uh, right. pretty shot as well, to be honest. Well, there's a weird question. Do you miss being in a band? We were kind of in a band, so no. For um, me, I, you know, for me, I was never a solo singer. I was only, you know, I, I did Boys On, and then obviously I did Boys Life, and... Uh, you know, from, from, from listening to your experience as a solo singer, and, and obviously I, like, I've watched Rona Keaton over the years, um, and I look at the fun we have on stage, you know, yeah. it's, it's, we're not, we're not, it's kind of two of us up front with a band, and I love it. I love it. I don't think I'd enjoy it on my own. I really don't. I think I no. love it because there's two of us sharing it together, you know? Um, and just, it's, I mean, how, it's having interaction that makes it so much better, you know? I think knowing me from being a solo artist, that's the one difference between being solo and being with you is, have a lot more fun interacting on the stage like if we do something fun and sharing something on stage a lot better than when you're just there on your own it, it's it's kind of weird when, whenever i do solo shows have you got so, uh, what's you on never, your you bottom lip huh is it just the screen <laughs> yeah your bottom lip looks funny on the screen like ah ha funnier <laughs> <laughs> funny <laughs> <laughs> as in like how the fucking state you <laughs> yeah. how's that how's that diet coke and ice going down all right very nice. Um, <laughs> fuck off. It's my birthday. It's here. It's my Australian birthday. Fuck off. <laughs> Absolutely. Happy birthday, bro. Um, okay. Keith, did you look at your photo book I gave you in Canterbury on the last you did before the lockdown? The last show, I guess. Yes, I did. In, in actual fact, I've, I flicked through it. There's some great photos in that. And uh, Rico actually has it in the van in Manchester. So I must, I must get it back off him, actually, now that you've mentioned it. Did you? Uh, you need to watch. Um, we were on point this tonight, and your hair is deadly. And I think you should cut your hair like that again. Look deadly. Well, any kind of haircut we do with the own. That's true. <laughs> Don't shave. I'm not going to. The worst thing we do is shave our heads. <laughs> oh wow. Hey, Harry. Hey, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> our pets' heads are falling off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, I found a. Um, I found a, a bloopers reel from The Hangover. Oh no way! Oh, God, r remind me to send it to you. It's absolutely hilarious. Out all the outtakes. That. that must have been a, that must have been so much fun for those boys recording those movies. Oh wait, I send it. You're gonna love it. By the way, if anyone's <laughs> asking, that's that's uh, that's our our tour movie. Me, Keith, and Rico. We um we literally we will watch Hangover one, two, and three literally just on a loop in the van. Just and even at night, you know, some nights we do those really late gigs, and we might have a four hour drive after to go home and. Rico be driving we'll even just put on the sound of the movie in the car and just fall asleep listen to it and just all you'll hear is these little laughs in the car <laughs> the sleep <laughs> Phil, gets Phil gets it Phil gets it okay let's see uh, what is your best memory from being in boys life um, well there's, there's two I think when we, we first decided to do the show together four years ago for me when we got that phone call to say that the tour had sold out and it was like four hours Remember that? We got that phone call. Oh, yeah. The show was on for four hours. And, um, we got the phone call to say that the tour is completely sold out and it's, the whole tour sold out in four hours. And we were like, that. we thought it was a joke. Um, and, and, as, and as well, my, it's, it's that, a split between that and I have to say, it's, there's three, there's three. Okay, I'm going to do this in three parts. My three favourite memories because they, they all kind of are the same for me. The first phone call, which was like, this is incredible. Um, the second is making the album being in the studio recording our first album with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra was was something that I think both of us had, had, had never experienced in our life before to record an album in an orchestra. And for me, this tour we've just done now, the big show that was has just been just that one of the best experiences in my life. Yeah, three moments for me. Yeah, no, well, well, well your last point you made there, I mean, the, the, sh the show that we've just done, obviously we've moved up now to a full kind of bells and whistles, which, which is amazing. Amazing, um, but the live band behind us and the production and and just the different kind of parts of the show. I really enjoyed our most recent uh, our, our most recent shows. How far we've come is amazing. So it's a show to be yeah. proud of, really, isn't it? Um, yeah, I, I think it, it was obviously you know it's a, it's a very hard time with everything going on, and it's just such a shame because we were we were just in full flow. We were only getting started. I know we'd done 24, 25 shows, but you know we'd only got started of what was going to be a year of. We were, we, I think we had something like over 150 shows this year, something ridiculous, didn't we? In, yeah. With the festivals I mean, and everything in Europe. A lot of them now have been either cancelled or postponed, unfortunately. But we were lucky to get 24 shows in before the lockdown. Um, yeah. 
And hopefully, come September, when we get back on the road, all this stuff will be behind us and we can look forward to getting back on stage again. Yeah, I can't wait. Uh, I think, you know, someone asked me the other day about what's, what's the hardest, what's, well, you know, obviously, what's the hardest thing about the lockdown? What do you miss the most? And I don't really miss much. Like, uh, being at home with Danielle, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm watching box sets and doing things. I obviously miss, um, I miss playing golf a lot, obviously, because especially when the weather's like this, you just, when you're, and you're home, you just want to get out and play golf. But the other thing is I miss performing at night. You know, I miss that kind of having that, you know, that, that feeling during the day going, oh, we've got a show tonight. I'm looking forward to it. That, that excitement of going on stage, that's, I got, I'm missing that as well because we were obviously full-blown in the tour when this all happened. So I'm missing that a lot. Yeah, no, absolutely. I hear you. Um, but we'll, we'll be back. We will, without a shadow of a doubt. Well, listen, the second half of the tour is still, as, as we speak, is still going ahead. We've got shows from what, the, near the end of August right through till October, November. And, and at the moment, if, if we can all stay safe and, and you know, do our social distancing and, and, uh, and do what we're told, we will, we will all be back to, to normal life, hopefully, by then. So at the moment, we are still planning to, to, to do the dates that are out there at the moment in September. So we'll see. Oh yeah, please God. But just to say, one of my one of my favourite memories actually is something that happened to us quite early on when we started. Um, and What's that? that? The performance that we got to do, the performance we got to do in the Faroe Islands. It was one of our first. Amazing! Days, but it was amazing. It was brilliant. amazing. I've actually got a video of it. You there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. I was just saying, I've got a video of it. Yeah, it was, it was brilliant. It's so early on to get such a big gig. It kind of, it kind of, it, it gave us the idea that this, oh, this could be really good. This could be big. If this works, this could be good. Yeah, that was incredible. There's a, there's a great, there's a great shot. Do you remember you went out into the crowd and you're like almost yeah. body surfing, lying on top yeah, of Yeah, crowd, <laughs> crowd surfing. Yeah, crowd it was surfing. Amazing. Yeah, it was brilliant. Um, and and the, you know what? That's I've done a few shows in the fair ones, and I, that gig is just so amazing because it's such a small island, and. A, a very small population, but for that, sh for the shows that go there, I think they only do like three shows a year in the fair one. So when the shows are on, they're outdoor on, at the bottom of, of like it's like it's like a, the whole of the fair ones are like mountains, and the, the gig kind of happens right at the bottom of the island at the end of the mountain, and the whole the whole pretty much country turns up because I think there's only about fifty thousand people or something, and they have over thirty thousand people come to the gigs, which is just again brilliant. again a great a great place to be to rob houses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think you should struggle to get off the island with that. <laughs> true that. True that. True that. Okay, let's see. Let's get another question. What have we got? Hello. Okay, hello, Filipino fans. Um, it must be very early over there, is it? Or is it late at night? No, late, late at, night. at night. It's like it's like uh, twelve o'clock. Depends who's asking. I think <laughs> our idea of, of early in the morning or late at night. <laughs> They can get a bit. That's a bit of a grey area for us. Yeah, well, well I, I, this is this is my morning. I'm, I'm only up. <laughs> <laughs> it's this this whole kind of lockdown isolation, man. My clock. I've no routine at the moment, so it's like, you know, you, you just staying up half the night and then lying in bed in the morning. I need to get a routine back. Yeah, start doing a bit of training or cycling or something. I went cycling. Me and Danny went cycling the other day, and. I got about halfway to where we we're going to go and I wanted to die. And I just said, I'm not, I got hated it. I kicked the bike into the garage. I was like, I hate that bloody thing. <laughs> uh, the, the idea, it's, all, it's, it's the thought that counts and you had the thoughts. So that's, yeah, right. that's what I said to the bike. Ah, oh, well, okay. it's the thought that counts. I took you out for half an hour. <laughs> I was hoping I got a puncher just to walk home. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, best Easter egg. Uh, it's got best Easter egg's got to be a Cab always Cadbury's. I don't really care what which one it is. It's just the middle bit. As long as that is Cadbury's chocolate, I'm in. Yeah, I mean, like, like that. I love the Easter egg out of the fridge. Everybody in my house thinks I'm a weirdo. I love the egg out of the fridge. Yeah, no, I have to agree with you. It lasts longer as well. There's nothing worse than you get one that's been sitting in the back window of a car and it comes out. You have to drink it out of the tin foil. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That it used to okay. be an egg. Uh, where we go? Uh, what have you been doing to pass time? Um, I think the same as everyone else. Probably just watching box sets, hanging out. I know Keith, you, you and your family have been playing board games and stuff, haven't you? We've been playing board games, but Jay set up the PS3 on the big TV, and you, and basically, I can't, what's it called? Um, I can't remember what it's called. But you, you type in something on your phone, and your phone then becomes not Fortnite. Your, 
No, 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 no. Be, and everybody in the room uses their phone as as your as your um, joystick, and it's it's called it's called a spoofer or fibber or something. So you have to write down a truth about yourself and a lie about yourself, and you have to guess who's lying and who's telling the truth, and it's all on the telly. Brilliant. It's, uh, that is brilliant. Fun. I love that. So we're playing that every night. It's hilarious. Some of the things. Do you remember? Like, do you remember the game that used to be out for the PlayStation called Buzz? It used to get the little buzzers, and it was a quiz game. I think Jason Donovan used to do the little cartoon character. Welcome to Buzz. And it's like a quiz. It's like you all have a little, you get a special little buzzer, and there's four of them. And he, he asked a question, and you buzz in on your little buzzer, and you press what the answer is. It's like a proper game, uh, game oh, show. Oh, very good. Oh, it was yeah, it's, it's like technology's brilliant now, isn't it? Like, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, some some of the things that me and Duffy has been writing down as our lies and our fibs, <laughs> I don't know where to get them from. <laughs> <laughs> but we're having we're we're having we're having fun. I mean, I would never, you know yeah. yourself, I'd never get this type of time at home with the family ever. You know, I'm on the road the whole time. Like well, even on tour, even on tour, if we got. You're breaking up there, Duster. Yeah, now it's gone. You're going. For... <laughs> Okay, yeah, like, before like, I know what you're saying, though, even when we're on tour, this. like if we're in the UK. And... Is it gone? Huh? Is my Wi Fi gone? Yeah, no, I was just saying to you. Yeah, Wi Fi is crackling up a little bit. Yeah, maybe we should take a couple of questions and then just wrap it up so before I die. Okie doke. Okay. Uh... How can I pre-order the album, Keith? I've no idea. <laughs> <laughs> press the link. Press the link on the Boys Life Instagram. If you go to the Boys Life Instagram, there's a link that you can press there to pre-order the album. Okay. Um, hello. No one's asking questions. People are just saying things now. Uh, I've been listening to you. Needing me. Good on you. Uh, favorite city to visit and why? Oh wow! Well, we've been very lucky that we've done a lot of traveling over the years. We've 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 traveled around the world quite a few times. We've been very blessed to be given that opportunity. Really, um, some of the places I love to go, where you know, well, one of my favorite places in the world is New York. I love New York, um, mm. and it's a funny thing because Boys Zone never really kind of made it big in America. So it's kind of one of the places we can go where nobody knows us, and it's nice to to sometimes have that, um, you know, that that you know, that freedom to just kind of go out and have a bit of fun and not worry about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what I, that's like, that's what Dublin's like for me now. <laughs> <laughs> Dublin's like that for me too. <laughs> the whole of Ireland is like that now. Do you know what, do you know what's weird? I lived in New York and I didn't like it. I, I it's, it's, it's not one of my favorite cities and I don't, I never liked living there and I didn't like going there. I much prefer, I, I lived in LA and I much preferred LA than New York. I think it's because of the weather and, the kind yeah. of lifestyle there, a bit more laid there back. Is, there is that, and I do love the sun. I do. I, I, I think countries that have sun shining in the morning when you wake up gives you a much better start to the day. It puts a yeah. spring in your step. I mean, you know, I love Ireland, and like we said earlier on, there's some most beautiful places in the world are here in Ireland, especially when the sun is shining. But in the winter time here, it's so grey. It can be it be quite depressing getting up in the mornings. It's still dark when you're getting up. It's dark by five o'clock in the evening. It can be quite dull in the winter. In yeah. the summer, it makes up for it, but. I think living in a country where you're waking up to sunshine every day, like Australia or Sydney, like that, I say that's amazing, you know? I'd like that yeah, one is. day when, when I start to retire, my old yeah. age. Right, we're going to say goodbye to everybody. Dust, we're going to say goodbye to you. Um, thanks, everyone, for hanging out. Um, and I'm going to go start my 40th birthday celebrations. Well, listen, Brian, I, 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 don't know, I don't even know how to say it to you, man. I'm absolutely, absolutely gutted that I'm not with you for your 40th. So, um... And I know it's tough having your 40th and you have to locked down, but I'll be thinking about you, brother, and I'll um, I'll be FaceTiming you in the morning to sing you happy birthday. Oh, okay. And, Not too uh, early. <laughs> don't worry, it's me you're talking to. Uh, and thanks, Danny. Thanks, thanks for helping out with the thanks, questions. Thanks, Danny Bear. Look, she's got the cleaning products on. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, man, we, we'll, make up, we'll make it up to you when, when all this lockdown stuff is over. We'll, we'll celebrate your 40th properly. But, you know, you know I love you. And have a wonderful birthday. But I'll talk to you tomorrow, bro. Talk to you tomorrow. And thanks to everyone for joining us tonight. And uh, stay safe, stay at home, wash your hands, and we'll see you very soon. Keep the faith, bye, stay safe, stay at home. Bye. Bye. bye.